the TikTok saga gets weirder by the day as the countdown to its for sale goes on. So why not throw another company into the mix like Oracle? Yeah, Oracle. Oracle is a huge company, by some estimates the second largest software company in the world based on revenue, so they could easily fund something like this, but the question is, why would they be interested in TikTok and social media? I want to quickly recap the saga here, ByteDance, which owns TikTok, currently has until November 12th now to sell or spin off all US-based interests in the company based upon an executive order issued by Trump. There have been a number of potential public suitors for the company, but the most highly publicized has been Microsoft, which has given itself a September 15th deadline to complete the sale, maybe extending that with the new further uh, deadline for them to sell it. But Microsoft does own LinkedIn. Kind of makes sense seeing them jump into a social media platform with 80 million users. But that's not all they're after. And that's not all that Oracle would be after. So it's all that sweet, sweet data. That's really what it's all about. It's thought that Oracle is looking to beef up the cloud server side of their business and also offer up a lot of data to potential advertisers. So what better way to do all of that than pick up a TikTok with a ton of personalized data and a direct platform to show ads on. So of note, Donald Trump, has said that he's supportive of Oracle purchasing TikTok as well. And also of note, Larry Ellison, the chairman of Oracle, is a big Trump supporter. So take that for what you will, but it just further adds to the drama surrounding TikTok. You can read more about it at digitaltrends.com. When it comes to the pandemic, contact tracing has been utilized to track cases and initiatives to utilize phones to help with that has been rolled out to some parts of the world and even a few states in the U.S. so far. But there's a new push to bring wearables into the fold, which could vastly increase the ability of health professionals to help track and ideally slow the spread of COVID-19. So there's a consortium called the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, which is a nonprofit that handles the administration and standards for the Bluetooth wireless technologies that we all use. And it's advocating the use of smartwatches, fitness bands, and even any other kinds of wearables because it would help include people who aren't regularly using a phone or even those who use, use them for outdoor activities. Say you use your smart band, but you don't bring your phone with you. Well, this is another way that you could actually be able to participate in this. So particularly, this would be valuable for kids or even the elderly who aren't necessarily on phones. Uh, so the goal is to add these devices into an ENS or an exposure notification system. So these systems allow health officials to backtrack and find people who have, they have been exposed to disease to alert them to get tested. So essentially, your device would send and receive pings from other devices that are near it. If you get exposed and you've opted into an ENS, then someone could trace the devices you interacted with or were near and then potentially identify the owners of those, let them know they should quarantine and get tested. It could really help slow the spread. So data privacy, always a big concern for this. So that's why the Bluetooth SIG said it's working out the specifics of how the tech would work for wearables now, and it expects to have it available within a few months. So you can read more about that at digitaltrends.com. Continuing on with trending news, here's something you're gonna see soon. Google Maps is getting a pretty major update to its services, leveraging its imaging techniques to bring a lot more details to natural features and to cities. So the updates will be rolling out to all 220 countries and territories that it covers. And you'll notice it at first when it comes to natural features. So they combine satellite imagery and a color mapping technique to give a lot more definition to things like deserts or forests or icy mountains. You could actually see the start and end of these things. For instance, forests aren't just gonna be a green block on the map. It'll better show how thick the forest cover is in different areas with darker or lighter colors. It'll even define things like deserts or beaches. And so the other features that will be coming to cities. But to start, it'll just be to New York, San Francisco, and London. So the purpose of these updates is to help facilitate uh, a lot more people who are, trans who, are, who are using transportation in different ways right now because of the pandemic, essentially. So whether you're walking, using bikes, or scooters, the details will include how wide or narrow a road is. It could actually show you how much room you have on a bike if you're riding down the road and you're worried about cars and the same thing. So you, you could also see more where sidewalks are, where crosswalks are, even pedestrian islands. So a lot of important things to help people get around. Now these updates will be rolling out this week for the natural features, but the city side is going to take a little bit longer. They said it'll come in the coming months for those three cities, but then other cities will get the updates after that. Read more about it at digitaltrends.com. And one more trending story here, SpaceX. Yes, they have certainly been in the news a lot and they've been extremely successful lately with the launches that they have been sending up, in particular for the Starlink internet satellites. And the key reason to that is because they're able to reuse so much of what they're sending up. So they celebrated the 100th, 100th launch earlier this week. And while we've seen a ton of amazing footage over the years, this video right here is 
pretty amazing, and it's one that Elon Musk showed. So it's what it's showing is recovering one half of the fairing. So that's what holds the rocket's payload. And it's really hard to be able to retrieve them both, but this is something they've been working on. So the fairing itself is about 43 feet long, 16 feet wide, weighs about 2,200 pounds, and costs $6 million. So you can see why they would want to retrieve these in the safest way possible. And as this is coming down, they're able to stabilize it with a series of uh, with a series of nitrogen thrusters, and then actually track it with a GPS-enabled and steerable parafoil, which is like a basically like a parachute. So they can slow it down and drop it there into that ship at sea. That is incredibly complex, and this video is pretty great that they showcase that right here. So definitely exciting. I would say check out more about it there at digitaltrends.com.